Hello, and welcome to the VASA and VVOL webinar. In this webinar, we will be discussing the SAN Symphony environment, but the configurations can also be applied to the Hyperconverge Virtual SAN as well. In this webinar, the topics we will discuss are installing the VASA provider, creating the proper user within Windows, creating a VVOL manager in SAN Symphony, proper naming conventions, how to create a virtual disk template, viewing protocol endpoints, creating vVols within vSphere, creating a storage policy within vSphere, and creating a virtual machine within vSphere. Please review this webinar in its entirety before making any changes to your environment. At the end of this video, you will find links to more in-depth information on the topics covered. Let's get started. To begin, load the Datacore deployment wizard, click Application and Server Tools, and click Next. Select VASA Provider for VMware vSphere and click Next. And now, select Install VASA Storage Provider and click Next. Now accept the terms and conditions and click Next. Enter the host name to deploy the VASA Storage Provider. The machine must be in the same domain as your vCenter. If the installation is on the same machine as your vCenter, you can click Use Default Credentials. If not, Fill in the username and password. Now please enter the SQL Server information. For proper configuration information, please review the release notes at datacore.com. And now enter the vCenter server name. Also, you must enter the administrative username and password for the machine and click Next. And now enter the install path and the provider port and click Next. Lastly, review the deployment summary. If the settings are correct, click Next. The installation of the VASA storage provider is now complete. Click Exit. And now we move on to creating the VVOL user. You must create a new user within Windows on all of the Datacore servers, and the passwords must be the same on each server. And in our example, we create the user VVOL user on each server and set the passwords. As a note, you do not have to set this up as an administrator account. Once the Windows accounts are created, you must create a VVOL manager user within SAN Symphony. Once SAN Symphony is loaded, click the Users button located on the top right of the ribbon. Click Register User, type in the username that you created within Windows, and assign it the role of VVOL manager, and click Register. Now that the users have been created properly, it is now time to create the VVOL templates. It is suggested to name the templates gold for high-end storage, silver for mid-range, and bronze for low-end storage, so it is easier to keep track between SAN Symphony and vSphere. To create a virtual disk template, click Virtual Disk Templates on the top left of the ribbon, then click Create Virtual Disk Template. Next, fill in the required information. Fill in the template name, the virtual disk prefix, and also fill in the short description. The redundant mirror paths can be checked if needed in your configuration. Select your storage profile, fill in the virtual disk size, and finally select your storage source. The storage source is your disk pools for each data core server. The protocol endpoints are created automatically when the VASA provider is created and added to the vCenter. They are the pathway to your storage container. Within SAN Symphony, the protocol endpoints are located under the virtual disks as shown here. Only one protocol endpoint is showed mirrored and the other is listed as single. This provides redundancy in case one path goes down, it will automatically switch over to the other path. And now on to vVols. To create a vVol, you must use the web interface of vSphere. To begin, load the web interface Click on your vCenter, click the Manage tab, then click Storage Providers. You will see the Data Core Server Group listed in the center of your screen, and the status is online. If the status is listed as offline, you must review the release notes. Once we verify this, we can continue. Now, click on the Storage tab. Right click on the Data Core cluster, then go over to Storage then click New Data Store. The Data Store wizard will load. 
simply click next for the location, then select VVOL. The VVOL option is only available when using the web client. Click next. Fill in the data store name and select the storage container. The storage container was created previously in SAN Symphony and it is pulled into vCenter. Select the desired storage container and click next. Now select the hosts you want to assign it to and click Next. Now confirm the settings and click Finish. Now that the VVOL was created, the next step is to create the storage policy. Click the Home button on the top center of the window and click Policies and Profiles. Now select VM Storage Policies on the left side. Now click the New button on the center panel. And now, fill in the name of the policy and click Next. Now, click on Rules based on Data Services and click Data Core Sans Symphony V. Click the drop down below that and click Storage Profiles and click Next. And now, select the rule set for the storage profile. They must match the virtual disk template created within Sans Symphony. If the properties do not match, vCenter will show a compatible profile of 0 megabytes of storage. You may need to check back within the San Symphony GUI to take note of the proper rule settings. The rule settings that you see here match the policy settings we set up previously. After the settings are confirmed, click Next. As you can see here, the compatible storage has been found. Simply select it and click Next and now confirm the settings and click Finish. Repeat the process for corresponding virtual disk templates within Saint Symphony that you would like to use for VVOLs. Now that the VVOLs and policies have been created, we will now create a virtual machine. Click on the Home button and go to Hosts and Clusters. Right click on the Host Machine and click New Virtual Machine, then New Virtual Machine. This will bring up the new virtual machine wizard. Select create a new virtual machine, then click next. Enter the name of the new VM and select the location and click next. And now select the source and click next. Now select one of the storage policies that was created previously and click next and now select the compatibility. For our example, we will be selecting ESXi 6.0 and later and click Next. And now select the operating system and click Next. Select the hardware information needed for your VM and click the New CD DVD drop-down menu and select Data Store ISO file. A dialog will pop up and select your installation ISO file. Click the Connect checkbox and then click Next. Now confirm the settings and click Finish. You have now created a virtual machine. Once the new machine is created, go back to the Sans Symphony server and you will see two files with the name of the new VM you created presented as a new virtual disk. The two files shown are the config file and the VMDK file. Now that we verify the config file and the VMDK is shown within Saint Symphony, go back to vCenter and right click on the new VM. Go over to power, then power on. Once it is powered up, simply right click on the VM and click open console and proceed with the operating system setup. Once the VM is powered up, under the data core service panel, a new file is presented, a temporary VSWP file. Within the host panel, the VMDK, the VSWP, and the config file bind to a protocol endpoint. When the VM is powered off, the VSWP will unbind from the protocol endpoint and the VSWP is removed. Here is a quick clip of vCenter and Saint Symphony side by side. You will notice that when the VM is powered off, the VSWP file is automatically removed within the GUI but the config file and the VMDK file still remain. And now, please take a look at facts 1643 and 1348 at datacore.com. They cover the best practices for Vivol and Vasa and Sans Symphony.
More detailed information can be found on our online help about protocol endpoints and for a detailed compatibility chart on VMware ESXi, check out FAC1556 at datacore.com. And that concludes our webinar on VASA and VVOLS.